They say, okay, we're going to the commercial break. They take the award, they walk off. Next thing we know, boom, the door slam over. Here come Tupac down the down the road with about a hundred half crips, half bloods, <laughs> and he got on fatigues. So when we get in the back, they like, yo, Pac coming back this way. Biggie <laughs> them had just performed. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. As you talk about that, <laughs> look at what's going on with um, Puff Daddy right now. I mean, it's I mean it's warranted. I mean, baby, how do somebody who never wrote a song, produced a record, got all the money? Mm. That's real. Boy, that's real. <laughs> Bars. Because somebody facilitated you to be able to have all the control on and all, if you ain't got the talent and you can't write it, you can't produce it, then you got to use something else. It's called sex. Mm. Damn. That's how you control. That's old. That's, I mean, that's, that's, that's the old world. But if think about it. A person that don't got the talent is going to be more demonic, more evil, and more heartless when it comes to taking something from somebody because they can't produce nothing. That's real, man. And I, you've been in this business a while, so you've seen a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, that's why, you know, people got mad at me in the dialogue conversation. I said, check this out, bro. I ain't never put my name on nobody at work. I ain't never took none from nobody. And I ain't never stole nothing from nobody. Now, can you say that about most of these people at the top? You can't. You can't. So if you got all these people up here hollering this, I'm the greatest, I'm the greatest, and then you look down the crib, did you write that? You didn't write that? Well, how you write that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that what I'm saying. I'm just saying, are we going to be, are we going to live in a world of, uh, of falsettos or are we going to live in a world of truth? Because that's the reason why the youth ain't listening to the grown folk now. Because y'all done did too much lying for certain people and the kids can see that that's a false. That's real. That's a fake. But you want me to believe the fake is as good as this. Now, if you're going to make a fake as good as this, then hell, we ain't got to believe nobody great. Man. That's real. I want to ask you about <laughs> I, I want to take, take you down this road, man, back to the uh, Soul Train Awards. When you know everybody always asks you about this. My, I had OG uh, Pyru on here, and he was there that night. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Don Cornelius wouldn't, at first, like he wouldn't let... Uh, because uh, he was with Suge now. Mm -hmm. they, they, they wouldn't let him in. Mm -mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, and, they wouldn't let him in. So I, explain to me how, from your side, like how did that night go just upon their arrival and everything that transpired? We were there. We was going on stage. We was giving an award to, I think, Jagged Edge. Jagged Edge had won. Boy, I was going to get married. Boy, I was going to yeah. get married when that, Jagged Edge yeah, that I think was I was going to marry something back then. <laughs> That was the song. Yeah. <laughs> so we're giving, them, we're giving them an award for that. And they say, okay, we're going to the commercial break. They take the award, they walk off. Next thing we know, boom, the door slam over. Here come Tupac down the down the road with about a hundred half crips, half bloods, <laughs> and he got on fatigues. So when we get in the back. They like, yo, Pac coming back this way. Biggie them had just performed. Biggie had just performed, I think, um, one of, I think it was one of his little records and he was walking in the back. I remember he had on a a, 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 a tuxedo. So it was one of them Faith, I think him and Faith record. It was one of them kind of R&B records. So mm -hmm. he wasn't even in no hip hop kind of guard. He was dressed up. So we was kind of like standing here, Pac see us. He like, yo, 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 what's up? Goody, goody, goody. So well, was he, Pac in without Suge? He was already in or was he? Or was they Shug? all came in together. They were all together. They all came in together. Pac was just in the front and everybody was following Pac. And once Pac walked right through the auditorium, everybody like, two by two Pac. He walked, he walked past the seats and walked and went in the back. So all the people follow him. So just imagine that we standing here and he walks up like, Gibby, what's up, what's up, what's up? And while he talking to us, he looked like this and he see Big. He was like, there go that fat <laughs> and That's when he started going, oh, he started doing it. We sitting there like, oh, it's all I did. And that's when Don Kniez came out like, like, hey, bro, shook. And he pulled Sugar to the side, and that was the first time I ever seen Sugar Bear round it up. But he rounded it up that night. That, he that rounded night, it yeah. up. <laughs> he made everything get right. Yeah, but that's I, all he did. That's all he did. Hey, 
Yeah, he knew because Don Canese kind of gave him that look like, hey man, you tear my shit up now, it's gonna be a different set of troubles for you now. Mm-hmm. He ain't gonna play with him. Like, look now, you know, take it outside. Them children, this is my shit. That's and, right. And you know, the 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 rank fell. You know, and he was like, okay, you right, you right. Hey y'all, <laughs> <laughs> this shit gonna get my view. <laughs> so it, it for me personally, like uh, him, Don Canese. And another person that really, really did a lot for the industry that people don't talk about, and that's Barry Hankerson. Yeah. Who's that? Aaliyah's. Oh, okay, got that's it. That's the one that I totally talk yeah. about on the yeah. show all the time. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's that's like, that's who read should. That's who read mm-hmm. a lot, uh, Jimmy Henchman. Yeah. So I was with that crew. Yeah. I was with him. So it's like, OG, stay here. You know, Bill Hanks is yeah, he's right here in Atlanta. You know what I mean? So it's like, for me personally, I just look at the ones who are renegade, J. Prince. I look, I look at everybody. When I look at Luke, when I look at J. Prince, when I look at everybody who was successful outside of what people say is the nucleus, which is New York, they don't get the same respect for building their empires without yeah. the corporate people's money. Everybody in New York had the corporate people money. People in the South had to put their own money up. Man, but don't they, don't you think that helped the game because of the way the, even to that, the, to this day? That's why they sleep when we've been awake for twenty years. That's right, <laughs> they've been yeah. sleep. Like I'd be like, man, what you talking about, man? The game been over. Wow, the game, the game. If it was a war between us and y'all, and it was about music, man, that been over, man, twenty years ago, man. What did you think when Master P? Did that run where he was? It was everything. Ghetto D, everything that was coming Master out. Master P was Master P was the greatest because <laughs> you remember that, don't you? It was yeah, amazing we, because yeah, we. I didn't really notice him until we got to um, we got to the Bay Area, and we was doing. And you know that's when you still had mom and pop stores, and you get to the mom and pop stores, and uh, we left the Bay, and we went to Chicago to a man named Joe. Uh, uh, Mr. Daniels and it was a shop on the west side and we walked in and P had 50 albums on just one wall and I was like hey man <laughs> drop it. Hey, hey. you know he was like bro like bro dropping an album every month and I remember being you gotta understand Master P beat Goody Mob man I got the hookup beat our second album, and we thought that you like wait, we wasn't mad, <laughs> but we just didn't understand. You see what I'm saying? Because we were coming at it another place. I've never been able to go into the studio and do this gangster music that these folk was able to push. Mm-hmm. And now that you know, twenty years later, these folk was telling them folk, go do that. That's what we looking for right there, that gangster shit right there. Yeah. And the whole time I'm standing doing that, I'm standing like, I'm doing songs like, guess who? Hold you in some arm. The first to change your diaper when your stomach wasn't calm. Your mama with that drama. By my mama coming to get me. Like, I'm, we doing soul food. We doing sales there. We trying to teach. And at the same time, now 20 years later, you sitting up here like, damn. <laughs> Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gon' talk.